Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I'm going to be telling you how to easily edit and export stock footage that you can then upload to different stock footage licensing sites and start selling to make passive income. If you want to know how to film stock footage, I have good news. I already have a video detailing all these steps and settings that you should use with your camera to start filming stock footage, and I will link to that video up in the corner and down in the video description, as well as to my playlist of videos that are all about helping you film stock footage and make money. I would also love if you would consider subscribing because I'm planning on making more videos that will help you make more money as a filmmaker in the future. Also, if you want to save time, I've put together a free stock footage jumpstart guide that's going to show you everything that you need to know to get your first stock footage clips uploaded online and you making money ideally in your first 30 days. So if you want to take a huge shortcut to making passive income, you got to check out this jumpstart guide, which I will link to down below. Now, with this video, I'm going to assume that you already have some footage that you've either specifically filmed to sell as stock footage, or maybe you're a wedding filmmaker like me, and you have a ton of B-roll that you filmed at various weddings over the years, and you're wondering how you should edit and format that footage to have it ready to upload to different stock footage sites. Regardless, this video should be super helpful to you. Starting off then, when it comes time for you to edit and export your stock footage, the first thing that I recommend is that you edit and export in 4K resolution or higher if you can. Meaning that if you filmed in 4K, I recommend exporting in 4K. Or if you filmed in a higher resolution, such as 6K or 8K, I recommend exporting at that resolution as well. If you only filmed your footage in 1080p HD, that's okay as well, but I definitely would not recommend upscaling that footage to 4K, as that can result in your footage getting rejected because it doesn't look high resolution enough. Just export your HD footage in HD and you should be good. The reason that you want to export in the same resolution that you filmed it is that the higher the resolution of your footage, the more that many stock footage sites are going to charge people to download your clips. So if you filmed in 4K, 6K or 8K, you can make more money than if you had just filmed in HD, for example. Next, you're probably wondering whether you need to color grade your footage or not, and the answer is yes. Every single stock footage licensing site out there is going to want you to upload footage that has already been color graded. So do not upload raw log clips straight from your camera, they aren't going to like that. If you filmed in a non-log picture profile that is already contrasty and saturated on the other hand, I would still apply some color corrections to the clip so it looks its best. Likewise, if you filmed in log, I would color grade and color correct your clip so it looks like a standard Rec. 709 image that is not flat or unsaturated. Regardless of whether you filmed in log or not though, I would not go overboard with your color grade. Remember, people are going to be wanting to download these clips to incorporate them into their own videos, and if you're uploading clips that are already heavily stylized with a custom LUT and colors that are over the top, the odds are that less people are going to want to purchase your clip because it's too stylized. By sticking to basic color corrections that look good, the odds are that more people are going to want to buy your footage. Lastly, in regards to log, I would do want you to be aware that there are some sites like ArtGrid that are going to want you to upload log footage in addition to standard footage. This way they can offer users both a graded and ungraded version of your clip, and the odds are that more people are going to want to download your footage, which then results in you making more money. So in some situations you may be needing to export both a log and non-log version of your your clips. And don't worry, later on in this video I'm going to show you a super quick way to do that that's going to save you a ton of time. Next, what about audio? Do your stock footage clips need to have audio? No, they do not. The vast majority of stock footage licensing sites want you to upload your video clips with the audio muted. So unless the audio is very critical to the clips you're uploading, it's going to be in your best interest to mute the audio. Talking frame rates here for a second now, if you filmed at 24 or 30 frames per second, I would keep your footage at that frame rate. But if you filmed at 60 FPS or 120 or 240 FPS, etc., I would always recommend slowing that footage down to 24 FPS before you export. This is going to make your footage slow motion, but keep in mind that anyone who wants their clip to be sped up, they can then download it and speed up that clip themselves. By exporting slow motion, you're also increasing the odds for your clip to be selected because slow motion is going to help remove any camera shake that you may have introduced when filming, and stock footage sites prefer smoother shots, so keeping things smooth will be helpful to you. 
Closely related to frame right now, we also have the length of the video clips that you should edit. And the vast majority of stock footage sites are going to want you to upload clips that are between five seconds and 60 seconds in length. There's some stock footage sites that accept shorter clips and some that accept longer clips up to 90 seconds, but the majority of sites are gonna want clips that are 60 seconds long max. So I'd be very careful whenever you're editing and make sure that your clips fall into that range. Likewise, whenever you're editing, most of the stock footage sites are going to want you to include edit handles on your clips, which is a fancy way of saying, leave some footage at the beginning and the end of the clip. So for example, if you're filming someone casting a fishing pole into a pond, make sure that you don't start your first frame right as the person is casting the fishing pole. Instead, start your first frame a few seconds before they start casting the rod. That way, if someone's editing, they can more easily incorporate the footage into their edit. Now, what about exporting your clips? The first rule that you need to be aware of is that most stock footage licensing sites have a file size limit of four gigabytes, meaning that if you upload any video clips larger than four gigs, they're going to be rejected. Also, some sites have smaller file size requirements and some have larger, so it's really gonna depend on where you're uploading to. So, to make sure that your stock footage is compatible with the widest variety of websites, I recommend exporting a master file of each video clip. This is an incredibly high quality video file that you can use to upload directly to stock footage sites if they accept unlimited file sizes, or if this file size is too large, you can easily convert your file into a smaller video file for other sites. If you're on a Mac, editing with Final Cut, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, I would recommend exporting in ProRes 422HQ, which is gonna give you a very high quality video file without being too obnoxiously large. They still get pretty big though. <laughs> you can also export ProRes 422 if you're editing in Premiere Pro on Windows because Premiere Pro supports ProRes on Windows. Unfortunately though, DaVinci Resolve on Windows does not support ProRes yet, so as a workaround, you're going to want to export in the DNX HQX codec, which is very similar video quality to ProRes 422HQ. Once you have exported a video clip as a master file in one of these high quality video formats, in the event that your file size is too large to be uploaded, you can always then use something like Adobe Media Encoder or Apple Compressor to decrease the file size by exporting in ProRes 422 instead of ProRes 422 to HQ, for example. Now, do you wanna save time? Of course you do. Whenever you are editing stock footage, the odds are that you're gonna end up with a ton of video clips from a shoot. For example, here I have footage that I filmed in Hawaii last year. And as you can see, there are just a ton of video clips here. Now, if you're editing in Premiere Pro, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to select each of these clips individually, set in and out points around each clip, and then export each clip individually using the export dialog box, which can take some time. Alternatively though, if you are using DaVinci Resolve, there is a much faster way. Simply edit all of your clips on the timeline like you would normally, and then whenever you go to export your video, make sure that the export as individual clips box is selected, which is going to export all of your video clips, as it says, individually, meaning you're gonna end up with video files for every single one of your video clips, and this is fantastic. And as a bonus, if you want to export log versions of your clips without the color grades, you can go down here to the enable flat pass menu and enable this setting, which is going to export all of your video clips without any color grades or effects applied. It's pretty awesome. And at this point, you have now edited all of your stock video clips and they are now the proper size and format and are ready to be uploaded to any of the stock footage licensing sites out there. I'm sure you're wondering now though, Matt, what do I do next? What site should I upload to? How do I title and tag my videos, etc.? Don't worry, I'm here to help and I'm working on videos answering all of those questions. So please subscribe if you wanna see them. To give you a shortcut to, I will also link down below to my free stock footage jumpstart guide. This guide is not only gonna tell you what to film, but also what to edit like we covered in this video, as well as where to upload and how to title your video clips, tag them, etc. So if you wanna save time and you don't wanna wait for me to upload other videos about this stuff, I would love if you would check out this guide. It's completely free. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.